Welcome to the second series of High Street Histories, where the focus is on the south side of Lowestoft in our time-travelling guided tour of the town's historic streets, houses and shops. I'm Dean Parkin. And I'm Ivan Bunn. And uh, in this episode, we're going to start with, I think that's one of my favourite photos of old Lowestoft. It's sort of full of excitement because the future has arrived. Yes. It's the first tram being driven down London Road South, and that means we know the exact date of this photo. Yes, don't this we? Um, photograph was taken on the 22nd of July 1903, and as you can see by then, London Road South could almost describe it as a thriving metropolis. It is, and the tram has brought the crowds out, hasn't it? I love the little boy skipping in front of the tram with a yeah, smile on his uh, face. And uh, of course, the, not only is the tram the sign of modernity, it's on the right-hand side of the picture, you can see the impressive telegraph pole. <laughs> so things are moving on. I love how they've dressed the tram for the day. Yes. Because you've also got the, the mayor of the town drunk. Yeah, drum Lancelot Ord there, that yeah. was the, the whole set up for the trams was his baby back in the early 1900s. Okay. He was determined to make it work. But um, unfortunately never did in the end. No. It lost money. It didn't last um, very long at all, did it? But also lurking in this uh, picture, the Lion Hotel. So that was demolished in the late 1960s. That's on the site of present day 205-207 London Road South, and that's where the Salvation Army shop stands. But immediately before that, you can see a series of low shops, little dormer windows at the top. Now, these are very, very early cottages. Uh, they predate most of what's in this picture. They were a terrace that stood alone with little front gardens. Okay. And as South Lowestoft prospered and grew and there was a more demand for shops and premises, the gardens had single-storey shops built over them. So we're looking at this transition from being basically a residential area to a retail area, presumably catering for not only the people who lived in the back streets that were being laid out here, but also for the holiday makers in the summer who could just cut through here and be on the seafront. Yeah, which was really booming at that time, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, this is Lowestoft, North and South, in its um, economic heyday. Yeah. We have just moved up slightly on London Road South again. Um, this is numbers 207 and 209, um, just up from the Lion, long after the Lion had gone. Um, and here you've got Reggie Ridge's sports shop, which was a very popular shop at the time. These shops here, plus the one to the left and one to the right that you can't see, these are the single-storey um, extensions that were put to the cottages. And if you look closely in the background, you can see the original fronts of the cottages when yes. these shops were in fact gardens. Okay. This would be the 1980s, wouldn't it, by the looks of things, I think? Yes, yeah. yeah. Mr Regis um, had a smaller shop. As business improved in the 1970s, he extended his shop to take in the adjoining premises. He, he was really w w w one of the sort of most famous shops, wasn't it, post-war in, mm. in London Road South. You think of those those independent stores, uh, and Reg Regis always sort of comes to mind. Oh, definitely, yeah. 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 So we're now going to visit another of the famous uh, London Road South shops, Hudson's, which was one of five butchers, apparently, in that area, in London Road South, in the 1950s and 60s. Yeah, and again, we've just moved um, slightly further south from the last photograph, and perfect examples here of how a terrace of small cottages with little front gardens had been developed, and they've had their ground floors extended over the front gardens. Yeah. And this is a perfect example there. So if we could go back in time, say, to the 1860s, all of these cottages here would have had a front garden. So we're going to move next door to this fascinating building. Uh, this photograph was taken in early 1900s. It was probably built... Um, about 1899-1900. We know that in 1883 there was a terrace of cottages here with large front gardens standing back from the road and they were known with the very unimaginative um, name of Builder's Place. Okay. <laughs> didn't, didn't take long coming up with that. Did no. <laughs> and um, 
we have no idea what they looked like or how far back they stood or how far back the cottages stood because circa 1899-1900, Mr Herbert Reddish, another one of South Lowestoft's entrepreneurs, yeah. um, bought up um, Builders Place and um, demolished the cottages and he built this wonderful restaurant. Yeah, it, um, it does look really an amazing yeah. design when you actually look at it. Yeah. Um, and uh, we know from the census that uh, Mr. Reddish and his family lived above the premises. Yeah. The other interesting thing about this photograph is if you look on the extreme left, um, you can see again uh, cottages with their little front gardens yes. that have long since disappeared. And so, um, as you can see, it's now been divided up into separate shop units yeah. um, here and with flats over the top. The building has evolved with the needs of time. Mr. Reddish probably retired and decided to sell his property and um, so it moves on. Yeah. So now we're going to visit uh, another one of the big, the big shops of London Road South, which was Haley's. Yeah, um, Haley's uh, in the 19th century and early 20th century had a smaller shop in Lowestoft High Street and they obviously decided to expand into South Lowestoft. It's described in the street directories as uh, being the house furnishers, ironmongers and wallpaper merchants. Yeah, right, <laughs> I also remember in, when, I was a, when I was a child in the 70s that I used to have a of a cafe there as well and you could you, yes. had, you had two sorts yeah. of milkshakes banana yeah. or strawberry <laughs> to choose from um, yeah. but it, it met its end didn't it there was a fire yeah. there on uh, Saturday the 22nd of March 1980 just a department was damaged mm. by a fire tackled by 40 firemen yeah. so they say and and they originally announced it would reopen another mm. three weeks but actually uh, by the October of that year it was up for sale and yes and yeah it never it never reopened yeah. and um, and the building was empty for over a decade and uh, eventually was redeveloped as Haley's Court yeah which were which are private apartments yes yeah and they tried I think to emulate the yeah, the look of the, the shape the, the, they, the, yeah, the shape um, yeah. as we can see yeah. this modern photograph of it. Um, Got that tower bit yeah. there, which which is similar, yeah. isn't it? It's an echo of it, isn't it? Yes. Really? So we've seen a butcher's, uh, a sports shop, yeah. a restaurant, yeah. and a department store. Yeah. A good example of the things you could find there yeah. after the Second World War. Yeah.